Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video I'll be talking about this lens right here It's the Fuji 60mm f2.4 macro lens now this lens has been out for a little while now I know it but I still feel like making a video on this particular lens because I think it's a really really nice fun lens to use from Fuji And it's also a macro lens and there's just so many things you can really experiment with this lens and without further ado Let's get into the video So the 60mm f2.4, now this lens has been out for a little while now, I know it is a budget macro lens from Fuji, but being a lens that's been out for a little while now, it also means that there are a lot of secondhand offers out there and you can definitely find a lot of really really good secondhand copies of this lens for a really really good price. And in this video I'll be talking about the usability, the build quality, leading into the image quality and my conclusion about this lens. So let's start with the usability, the build quality. The build quality is really really nice just like many other Fuji, even budget Fuji lenses out there. This lens has a really nice metal mount. The downside that I find it really really a downside from this lens is that there's no weather sealing. So there's no rubber gaskets around here and you know if you take it out into rain or super high temperature places into desert you might have to be careful with this lens. That being said the rest of the build quality of this lens is really really nice. Even the metal lens hood here it's also really really nice. I also like the um, the finishing inside the actual hood that it's not reflective like the outside because you know, why have a hood that would also be reflective inside. So otherwise the focusing ring here is also really, really nice and smooth. And also the aperture dial here is also really nice. What I like about this aperture dial is also that they give you these indications which aperture you're at. And it's really nice and clicky. You know, like if you compare it to some other lenses from Fuji, let's say the 16mm f1.4, the dial here, the focus, sorry, the aperture dial is also quite loose. On here, it's just, it just feels just right. That being said, if you're planning to use manual focus, well, if you're used to Fuji system, you'll know that the uh, manual focus on Fuji system isn't really that great. Yes, there are guides and there's everything, but the motor is either a little bit too laggy or goes a little bit too fast, even if you were to set it in the menu to move according to the sync of your movement. But it's still not really as accurate as other brands like Nikon and Canon. But otherwise, it's still really, really good. The build quality is great. It's also really, really nice and light but it also feels like it doesn't break if you drop it, though I don't recommend you dropping it. Um, just saying. So the next point is actually about focusing. Being a macro lens naturally doesn't focus that fast, and this is no exception. This lens doesn't really focus fast at all for a lens, even for, like for even a macro lens, it doesn't really focus that fast. But, you know, it will get the job done. I try not only focusing, you know, close-ups, but also focusing some daily life object or subject like a running dog or like a human being some portraits things like that just to get a feel of how this lens really behave because i don't really use this lens for professional work for professional i have the canon ef 100 millimeter to do all of the macro stuff and my work doesn't require a lot of uh, macro work anyway so this lens tends to be like a walking around lens and not really so serious that being said the quality is really nice but i'll talk about the quality later in the video but the actual af performance is not bad, just not fast at all. Though if you're buying into a macro lens, you're not really expecting it to have a fast autofocusing system in the first place. But it will get the job done. Is it accurate? Yes, it's accurate assuming your subject does not move that much or doesn't really move that fast. And regarding the autofocusing system on this lens for video, now this lens, let me just show you a little demonstration. This lens isn't really great for trying to focus in video because it is a little bit slow. Can it focus accurately, if you give it a bit of time, it will get it really nicely and spot on, but you know, it will not be able to track a lot of moving subjects, things like that. It's, I wouldn't really recommend it. You know, if you're using something like the 35 millimeter, the 16 millimeter, those lens will be really, really nice for tracking even fast moving subjects in video, but this lens is just way too slow and it hunts a little bit. So yeah, if you're planning to use it for video, um, <laughs> Take it for what it is and just be patient with it. But of course you could be asking why would you buy a macro lens to photograph something that's moving? Well, sometimes if you want to get a macro shot of like an animal, a really really small animal, sometimes it does require like a really nice macro lens to shoot and 
those smaller animals can move really, really quickly. So having a nice autofocusing system that can keep up with that would also be really, really helpful. And this lens, depending on the subject, dep like depending on the moving subject, it can get it in focus, but you're also like really playing with the um, your luck or your chances because Fuji system, like Fuji autofocusing system from the camera is also not really there yet. At least I haven't tried the X-T4, but I've tried the um, Expert 2, X-T3. Well, this is the X-T3 with the latest firmware and it's just not really there yet for like photographing fine detail animals, things like that. So yeah, but wherever you set the lens to focus to, it will always confirm that it's in focus. and. That's really a huge side of this lens because some lenses, like for example the 10 to 24, it doesn't always get it in focus. Sometimes it's just a hair out of focus that the camera will confirm that's in focus. But with this lens, it will always be tack sharp when you really get into focus. And another point is somewhat negative point that I have. It's rather like I'm confused. I'm not sure if it's only with this particular copy of the lens that it's really a problem with or it really affects to all 16mm macro lens from Fuji is sometimes when I'm shooting outside at f2.4 if it's bright naturally with other cameras they're like they would really bump up the um, shutter speed even though if I'm in aperture priority with this lens uh, sometimes if I'm outside it will just not go below f5 or f5.6 or sometimes f4 even though i really specifically set it to f2.4 so if someone has an answer to that maybe just leave it down below it's not that this lens just doesn't work at f2.4 or 2.8 it does because if i'm indoors and if i set it to f2.4 f2.8 it will go down that much but if i'm outside where it's bright and the shutter speed is only like at 400 of a second or 500 of a second and if it's in aperture priority, it just rather bump up the uh, aperture rather than bumping up the shutter speed. Which, that's not how the aperture priority mode actually works. So it's kind of confusing for me, you know, being in aperture priority mode and then it's just not keeping it to f2.4, but just bump the aperture up to f5 or 5.6 and just keep the shutter speed. So it's something that I'm kind of confused about and I'm usually not a shutter priority mode because I usually use either aperture priority or manual so those are my two modes that I always always stick to and never switch to any other modes so it's just something weird that I find with this particular lens but I haven't really tested enough of the 16mm macro lens from Fuji to really tell if it's really an issue with certain models or it affects the entire 16mm lens line from uh, Fuji. So the next point is the image quality. I actually don't have a lot to say because this lens produces really really nice image quality. It has very very minimal amount of chromatic aberration or pin cushion or distortion. It's just a really really nice lens to work with. If you want to buy this lens for professional work, you can definitely buy this lens for professional work. It will give you really really nice image quality with really really nice contrast control and very very nice control of the chromatic aberration. If there's any, you can definitely easily get rid of it in post or you don't really need to get rid of it sometimes because it's just so minimal and the distortion is actually barely noticeable like you can really use the image coming out of this lens it's it's really really that good the f2.4 is also a really really nice touch especially if you're coming down from like a full frame system and you're used to the f2.8 the f2.4 will get you that closer to the f2.8 effect of course the f2.4 will naturally let in more than the f2.8 but you know if you're coming in from a full frame and you're used to like bigger bokeh balls things like that and more creamy bokeh the f2.4 on here will not really disappoint that much the color coming out of this lens is also really really nice that being said you will get a tiny just ever so tiny decrease in contrast if you shoot against the sunlight but if you're not shooting against any direct light source or almost direct light source like the sun then you know you'll be fine and the decrease in contrast is also really really fixable in post like it just takes a matter of few seconds even if you're new to editing so it's it's a really really nice performer furthermore I think that the corner sharpness coming out of this lens is also really really nice like it's really really sharp if you stop it down from like 3.5 onwards at least in my opinion and experience your standards may vary some people might say it's a bit soft at 3.5 but some people might say it's also quite sharp at 3.5 but in my opinion I think 3.5 onwards the corner will get like 
really really sharp and it will also get sharper until like f8 or so and then uh, the image starts to get soft again after like f9 so yeah and another point about this lens is well in my opinion is actually kind of a negative but it's not too negative point is that it's marketed to be a macro lens yes in terms of macro lens, you can really focus, like really fine tune your focus. Your focus range is quite far, but in terms of the minimum focusing distance, to me, it's not really a macro lens. If you're coming down from a lot of full frame system, whether it's Canon, Nikon, Sony, you'll find a lot of normal traditional standard zooms can focus roughly, like roughly the same uh, minimum focusing distance and also like sometimes even closer. Actually, with Fuji 16mm 1.4 here, this focuses down to like between 14 or 15 centimeters from the sensor. But with this lens, it focuses between, I think, 26-ish or 27-ish uh, centimeters from the sensor. And it's really kind of a deal killer as a macro lens to me. So I feel like... Yeah, to a certain extent, it can be called a macro lens, but it cannot really focus that close as how a traditional macro lens would be able to focus. And uh, I think if this is your first macro lens, it's totally fine. But it, like many photographers, if you're buying into Fuji to get, you know, a smaller, nicer camera to actually take pictures with and just leave your working full frame cameras at home, then you'll find it awkward with this lens that it doesn't focus as macro, like as short of a distance as your normal, even budget, macro lenses from full frame that's even half the price of this particular lens so yeah just just to keep in mind it's not a bad thing it it really isn't a bad thing but if you're really into macro it can be a little weird and now to the conclusion i think that this is like one of the shortest video i've ever done about a lens it's a really, really easy video to make about this lens simply because it is such a good lens. Yes, there are things that I don't really like about this lens, such as the minimum focusing distance, the um, lack of weather sealing, but hey, you know, this is the budget version of Fuji's um, macro lens. Yes, at the end of the day, you're paying a premium price tag for a lens that's not weather sealed and also for a lens that has not really a good range of minimum focusing distance. But at the end of the day, it is technically macro and also it will deliver really really good image quality if you buy this lens i think well it sounds like i'm advertising for fuji but at the end of the day if you get this lens i don't think you'll be disappointed with the image quality i think the image quality will win over focusing system and also the focusing distance and also the weather sealing because at the end of the day it's also a really really nice and well built lens that will actually survive through certain condition just not extreme you know you can take it out in rain but really really light rain i don't recommend heavy rain but just light rain and also like light heat yeah if you really want to try out fuji macro lens well budget macro lens then you know this is a kind of one of the only few options out there that you're really looking at so yeah if you're looking for a free photography guidebook absolutely for beginner it's linked down in the description below it's on my website i wrote it and it's absolutely for free no need to pay anything no need to submit your email i will not send you any newsletter crap so yeah feel free to download otherwise if you have any questions feel free to contact me or leave any questions down in the description sorry down in the comment section below and i will do my best to answer them otherwise thank you very very much for watching stay safe have fun shooting Bye for now.